once he was done playing, he was like, now go, home. <laughs> now, go now go do it. And, uh, and we, 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 we felt good about what we came back yeah. with. Which is, which is yeah. cool. I loved Intergalactic. I got to see it uh, last night. Um, the visuals are obviously inspiring. The music is fabulous, of course. Yeah. Um, speaking of that music, Fletcher, when you first heard uh, Kid Cudi's songs, what images came to mind for you or what like vision for the story came to mind for you? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that um, luckily I heard the songs for the first time, having also heard the outline from these guys on you know the fact that it was an artist living in modern day New York City. So having that narrative while I listened to these songs really were the pieces of the puzzle that I needed to start visualizing this. And I um, say to people sometimes, what I used to do was like, run on my phone or run my bike around Venice Beach where I live and listen to the songs on repeat at nighttime and just, and that's how we started doing the first, you know, the first painting, just letting them absorb in me, thinking about New York City. And then um, from there, it was just really, you know, you know, scouring the internet to find the best artists around the world that you could help visualize this. Um, so yeah, the songs were just so inspiring for all of us, the writing process, and we talk about this a lot. You know, once we had that, was it's a unique way to work, right? To start with the music. And it was just an amazing emotional sort of jumping off point. Mm. And Maurice, uh, speaking of the writing process, what were the conversations like with Scott, with Kenya, and back and forth between you and Ian for what you were going to develop out of the album? You know, it was it, it, it was such a beautiful uh, like it, it it really was organically made. You know, I, and I and I I say that and I know that people probably often say that to answer, answer their question, but it really was. You know, we had. Scott had an idea that he wanted to do something about his time in New York, then flipped it back to me and, and, and Ian. And it's like, OK, well, the song that he played us, because we only started with like two songs. So the songs that he played us, it kind of is this thing or whatever. Then flip back to him. And he goes, OK, I like what you guys did with this, but I want it to feel like that. So like, OK, well, now let's go back. And we and, and by the time we got we started the writer's room, it was very, very like we I, I, I can't praise Scott enough for his like trust and also like taste because what he did was he really let us like he like bring it bring it back to me when it's a story when it's something that i can follow you heard the music and like let, let's do it and then it really was just like sliding things ever so slightly to the left ever so slightly to the right but it really was an uh like a, a ball passed back and forth and, and and once we once he was done playing he was like now go home <laughs> now, go, now go do it and uh and we we we, we felt good about what we came back yeah. with which is, which is yeah. I love that. During that process, what were the biggest changes, would you say, to the script or the story from when you started to then what it evolved to be, Ian? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, the process is really iterative. However, I got to be honest, like, not a ton changed. <laughs> not a ton changed. I like, like, it's the same thing, like, you know, with, with animation in the sense that once you start to storyboard things and, and you start to visualize sequences, things start to change, but it doesn't change the story. The story is on, the road, it's on screen. If anything, there were some moments where we used animation in a way that you know, can't be done in live action. For example, there was an Aladdin-like moment that um, these guys had in a script where uh, they leave a party and then Jabari wants to show Meadow his point of view of New York City and, and you know, to take her to a secret spot. And the song In Love is playing. And then just through the storyboarding process, it's like, what's the best way of using animation to express that? And so it was only really visual changes of the story that was already there. But I will also give you the, that is absolutely true. I think that like, like I would say 95% of what was written initially is on screen, except that we did change the ending um we changed the ending pretty late in the, in the, in the <laughs> process yeah the original yeah. version yeah. they never see each other again yeah and, i'm joking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wait a second <laughs> guys it's very sad we we um we the, the good thing about it was, was that there wasn't a lot to change you know because we were able to keep the story very, very simple and very, very tight. And I think that it got, the only thing that, that really changes the formatting of it and how we do the story. That's and the main thing. Heightening, heightening the point of views by using animation. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
Now, I loved, you know, the aspect of modern dating and how it's changed with the times, especially the like uh, the inclusion of Stush uh, <laughs> as they're using that dating app. Uh, who came up with that and mm. the, uh, you know, twist at the end that I won't reveal? Yeah, that, that was a writer's room joke. Um, right. The more we made the joke, the more we were like, huh, that's actually a really interesting idea. The modern dating aspect was something that was just really important to me. I, I was, I was, uh, before we had started, I was coming back from New York mm-hmm. and um, I was literally flying back to get back into the, the developmental writer's room with Ian. And I was watching When Harry Met Sally on, you know, one of my favorite movies. I was watching When Harry Met Sally on a plane. And I just remember that feeling after it was over, which I always get every time it's over. And I'm like, that's, that's what we're trying to make. We're trying to make a time capsule for what it's like to date in New York City right now. And then really just answer the question, like, is it possible to have an analog love story in this digital time? And that became the directive. And um, and, and so, it, you know, like, like anything, you only know how fast you're going when something's standing still. So we're like, we're gonna have these two people who never talk on the phone, who never do anything, it's all in person. We have to show the other side of that. And that's where the stush kind of well, idea kind of- we're able to use is, that as a continue. visual device, right? You yeah. know, so mm-hmm. having that built into the world and then when we were uh, like then creating scenes, we're able to use use like use Stush as a device to you know, like help carry the story. You know, yeah. if it's posters, if it's bus stops, you know, that is a reaction to the character's emotional place that they're in. And that became a fun thing for us when we were making it to what's a poster that is in relation to how the character feels right now. Yeah. And just a little inside baseball, Maurice, what is it? I mean, Stush came up because one of the writers used it as an adjective. I think it's a Caribbean. So, so yeah, so West Indian, West Indian, West Indian for like a, like a stuck, stuck up, up, like a stuck up person. So oh. Yeah, like, that person is a Stush. And yeah. then we were like, oh, what's a good? And then everybody <laughs> we were like, it can't be. Th- There's no way you were going to call it yeah. Stush. <laughs> And then it just, it just, it just kept going. You know? <laughs> I love that so much. Thank you guys. It was really a beautiful story. I loved it. You merged so well with Kit Cuddy's music. So thank you. Oh, thank you so, so much, much Tatiana. <laughs>